Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook, where we discuss the top topics of the region with the top experts, starting with <laughs> Wendy Weiss from the Big 550 KTRS, Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Ray Hartman from Ray Hartman's St. Louis Insider on Substack and from the St. Louis American, Alvin Reed. Hey, I do want to uh, share a little, little, not a program note, but a note that tomorrow night between 5 and 7, we'll be collecting money for the Salvation Army at the Ledoux Schnooks. <laughs> oh, yes, ringing we'll be bell. ring, ringing I'm bells. Ringing bell. And we hope you join us. Ledoux Schnooks tomorrow night, Friday, between 5 and 7. Ray Hartman, I want to ask you about uh, what hasn't been too successful, an attempt by two area lawmakers to get some compensation for those who claim illness as a result of radiation principally in North County around Coldwater Creek. There's something called the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, and it's supposed to provide, provide federal dollars for people who have suffered cancer, for example, as a result of uh, the nuclear arms proliferation in the United States. Well, Josh Hawley, senator from Missouri, and Cori Bush, congresswoman, failed in their attempts to get some money for people in North County. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch said uh, that because of their personalities, that they don't get along with anybody in Washington is one of the reasons St. Louis didn't get any federal dollars. Do you buy that? Yeah, I think it was a good editorial. Now, I, Josh Hawley's best issue, or least worst, you know, really his best issue. His least worst. <laughs> no, really, his best issue in since being a senator is he has been very forceful about the need to get aid support to Coldwater Creek, something I've been writing about for over a decade. Actually, the RFT wrote about it in the early 80s. Yeah. And, and Coldwater Creek and, and the Westlake Landfill, it is a, is, we have so many issues, it's hard to keep from being hyperbolic, but it is beyond tragic what people continue to go through. I know one person right now, a number of people, I should say, that are going through the, the health impact. But I, I would say this, that you could make the point that Roy Blunt and you know w Lacey Clay, who did try, they weren't successful. But I think that Josh Hawley and Corey Bush really have very little credibility within their own parties now, and because of that, the fact that Hawley was so loud, just mm. it was like crying wolf. They really are. When you think about it, uh, they are kind of a mirror image of each other when you know, obviously in very on different extremes but uh, very much building up their own brand to the you know to the exclusion of everything else around them so I, I also agree with the post-dispatch you never know well I'll tell you one thing I did go see a movie at the uh, St. Louis International Film Festival at Wash U and it was about uh, radiation and harm in New Mexico and uh, uh, Josh Hawley was portrayed as a hero in this movie, and at Wash U, he got a, a lot of applause for his hard work trying to get compensation. And no. you got to remember, this but, was not the only state that did not get money. So, But he still, I, and by the way, I thought the thing I did not like, the, the Post-Dispatch took this passing cheap shot for no reason that Lacey Clay said despite his ethical issues. And I don't know what they're talking about. And so I think Lacey Clay and and... Roy Blunt, but particularly both Lacey and Roy are ha having their images enhanced by the people that came after them. But Lacey Clay didn't have ethical that, That's funny you said it, because I thought the same thing. It went I mean, ethical the, issues. The only thing, the, the post I, I like Lacey Clay, but I thought there were ethical what? issues. And I, I, oh, I don't, I don't want to Well, I mean, I don't think he did. On, on they talked Clay. about that. I don't think it's fair. And my I, point I think is the post dispatch editorial page is not like the fact that he got money from payday uh, that's, what loan was, uh, that's what I was going to okay. say. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But anyway, but the, yeah. look, in, in American politics and American business and American recreational life, there's a place and time for spite. 
And you always got to be aware of the fact that somebody <laughs> might just you're say, right, like, right. you know what, I don't like you. Right. <laughs> and it's not from the, with that across the aisle because you're a Democrat. That's within your own thing. And they, that's right. It happens. Maybe and so. It, and I think it happened here. Well, well Bill McClellan, right. I want to ask you about uh, Sheriff Vernon Betts. Apparently, he's on the outs now with judges in the 22nd Judicial Circuit Court in uh, the city of uh, St. Louis. Uh, the presiding judge, who's Elizabeth Hogan, has written a letter to Judge rather to Sheriff Betts, saying, we don't need your services anymore uh, patrolling the courts because you're not doing a very good job. She doesn't think there are enough sheriffs in the courtrooms and that there's been some gra graffiti mm, sprayed on benches and laptops been stolen. She wants officers in the courtrooms. He's not providing that. He's not uh, happy about it. What do you think? Well, uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago, and I, I, I don't find patronage offices as terrible as, as so many people around here do. And the sheriff's office is one of the last patronage places. And uh, Sheriff Murphy, you know, I wasn't sure about Sheriff Murphy, but Mike Guzzi ran the office and, and did a fine job. And I feel the same way. You know, Reverend Vernon Betts, there's times I raise my eyebrows at him, but Steve Roberts runs the office and I think does a good job. And I am bewildered that they don't have enough deputies because this is a patronage office. And it's one of the few places where an alderman can get his or her brother-in-law in. So the fact that they don't have enough deputies, I don't get. But on the whole, I, I support the idea of a independent sheriff's office rather than the judges hiring their own. And, and you know, the, the point he made where um, a lot of his, his, his folks finish their training to be a police officer and then they get a job as a police officer somewhere. So that means that the people that are working there are, are not like lazy or anything. Right. So, but at the same time, I would say to the judges, well, if you've got the money to hire these bailiffs, how about you give me the money so I can hire some more sheriff deputies? I mean, it seems like a pretty easy solution. Obviously, something else is going on. Well, uh, well let's be, like, uh, uh, Vernon Betts is mercurial. Yeah. He's unpredictable, mm -hmm. and he was in the paper recently for using the N-word against one employee, and uh, he may not be the person that a lot of people want to work for. He's lost a lot of employees. But, but we so, don't, you know, he, he's, a, he's a character on the north side the same way Murphy, Jim Murphy, was a character on the south side. Mm -hmm. People liked him and thought that he ought to run the office, and, and I think that we ought to respect I, And he did I win an election. I mean, yeah. it wasn't like yeah. he just, is a, well, those are patronage jobs, but he had to, like, and, run and, and win. Absolutely. And to lose employees today is is not as rare as it once was. It's everywhere. Just, it, right, everywhere. everywhere. And, everywhere. I, and I learned long ago not to take on my fellow founder here when he when he plays that Chicago card. Bad government. Yeah. <laughs> when he plays the Chicago bad government card, it just makes too much sense. Yeah. And so it so I, and it's too honest. <laughs> but but I would say this that I'm a little bit more in the middle on this uncharacteristically in that if the judges are worried about their security, you know, I, you got to cut them a little slack. I mean, that's a, they are entitled in this day and age to be concerned about sure that. Sure they are. But I also don't think you should just lay it at Vernon's doorstep because of what you just said, that he doesn't really, probably doesn't have the resources, and it, it's, it, but it makes well, for here, an interesting the public The feud. judges want a sheriff in each courtroom well, all day long. But you know what? With people filing things electronically, there's not a lot of traffic. But so what I would suggest, why not lock the doors of the courtroom, even though they have to be open, you know, according to law, a court has to be open for public asset, mm -hmm. access, and put a sign there. And the sign should say, hey, if you want to do business, call this number, we'll be right out. That way you don't have to have a bailiff or a sheriff's deputy there every hour of the day. I would agree. Now, I will say, downfall of American society, um, you know, going to a courthouse used to be like, if you were on trial, if you were an attorney, you were a reporter, you were just hanging out. You had a tie on and you were dressed That's nice. Right. And when times started changing, mm -hmm. I think security at the courthouse should change too. All so right. if the judges have a concern, I think it's real, but I don't know that their concern is 
just directly at, should be at Vernon Bank. And, and I usually uh, like the way Judge Hogan thinks. I mean, she's got a good reputation. But I think in this one, I'm, I'm leaning toward Vernon Betts. Well, how about you, Alvin Reed, a sports columnist for the St. Louis American? What do you make of uh, Craig Berube, coach of the uh, St. Louis Blues, three and a half years ago won the Stanley Cup, and now he is out? Well, it happens. But it's, oh, and I meant to say this earlier. I am once again the Missouri Press Association Colonist of the Year. All right. Wow. Right. All right. Well, right. congratulations. So, now, that doesn't mean I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, it does. They gave me the award. That's right. All right. So when when the Blues lost, not against the Red Wings, but the, the game before, I guess, against the Blackhawks, who were terrible, I said, like, well, He's going to make it through the year, but they'll keep it through the year because, I mean, we won the Stanley Cup, and they lost to the Red Wings, and he was fired. And I just thought to myself that, well, you're not, you didn't really, he doesn't have the team he had before, and, and Mr. Armstrong, you kind of, you know, said coming into the year, we don't know what we got. Well, right. so I, I kind of feel like he was made a scapegoat, and I would have to say that I don't think he deserved to be fired. Now, do I feel sorry for coaches when they get fired? Maybe if they don't get a full year or something like that. But in this case, you know. Do, doesn't he have, and, and I, I agree with you, and, and Craig Berube has been around. He knows exactly what the, what the game is in every sense of the word. And I believe Martin Kilcoyne said yesterday with John Carney and Julie Buck that he's got three and a half million dollars left on his contract. Yes. So mm -hmm. that will... That will that will buy some salve <laughs> for the for the his soul. Wow. <laughs> and he's gonna land on his feet. Maybe, you know maybe, maybe uh, they just don't figure that he can work right with the young player. Yeah, it because could, this team happens. is not as good a team as they had even last year. That happens. So they, I think that they're looking and saying, hey, we have all these young kids coming in and. The chief is just too hard on people. Well, I mean, it, I have no idea. It's it's a big business. We all know that. And every coach, pretty much, just about gets in every sport, professional sports, gets fired at some point. It's very rare that one starts and ends with the same team and spends their career there. I I will say this. I think he was, you know, maybe because of his winning, he'll never should never be forgotten as the guy that got the first Stanley Cup oh. for the Blues. And I don't think they will find a better coach necessarily, mm -hmm. but. You know, and I so I'm I'm sad kind of because I thought he's a good guy. Having said that, um, I do think the team management uh, looks a little bit like the word scapegoat king uh, because they have not invested. At you know, you mentioned the team not being any good last year. They haven't. It's not like they went out and. You know, set the world on fire. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Right. yeah they, they haven't gone out. Yeah. So it's a little bit like, you know, sending him overboard mm -hmm. when they have not particularly stepped up with with the uh, amazing amount of resources yeah. that they've I had. I mean, once a week, disposal. once a week, the Blues play at home, and some guy that used to play for the Blues that was hoisted the cup. <laughs> He's on the team. Like, you know, well, and, that's kind of heartbreaking. For, forgive me, because I am obviously the least sports-minded of this esteemed panel. However... Are there, are there parallels between what's happening with the Blues and what's happening with the Cardinals? Eventually, the spotlight is going to go to the person making all the decisions, whether that's Doug Armstrong or John mm -hmm. Moselak. You know, you, you're, the one who's, you're the one who's saying that we're not going to have a great team this year, or you're the one who's hiring the managers. Mm -hmm. Eventually... Your your number might come up. If the Cardinals don't get it done next year, this time around Christmas, they'll be interviewing the new manager and the new no. general manager. Of yeah. The Cardinals. And, and yeah. These are not really yeah. the glory days right now in single sports. If you look back over the history of this town, one of the teams, of course we had football, but between football, basketball, hockey, almost all the time, one of the teams Was has had a big yeah. run. And this, we're in a, a little period where you really don't see very often where they're both down. I can even remember, mm -hmm. like, in the 70s, when the Cardinals were down, everybody was excited about the Big Red. Yeah, 70s. And, and so, you know, the, it, and then the Blues, you know... Now, I, I didn't live here in the 70s, but what were you excited about? Oh, we had a great team. We oh, had really? a cardiac. 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 to the championships and we didn't, Super Bowls. We didn't, no, but at least they were yeah. exciting. No, but they, yeah. everybody yeah. loved the I team. I don't recall that. We were all almost right. like... Okay. Yeah. Roger Hey, you messed with the team of my dreams. Wendy's wrong, though. I'm the one who knows the least about sports in this Apparently, if you're going to go yeah. messing okay. with our big yeah. red. That's hey, true. Um, I want to ask you, Wendy, about Highway 270, MoDOT and the governor and others this week announced that they're just about done with the huge 
uh, renovation of Highway 270 through North County. And functionally, it's great. I mean, the lanes are beautiful and you can get from here to there very easily. But aesthetically, I got issues with it because instead of greenery and vegetation on the sides of the road, they've got these concrete boulders, which I think are going to be too hot in the summer, impossible to get the litter out of, vegetation's already grown in them. You know they're going to spray some sort of dicamber to kill it, and that drifts, according to Bryce Gray of the Post-Dispatch. I hope this is not what we can expect for the newly renovated Highway 70 that the governor's already talking about. What say you? Well, I love you, Charlie. I do. <laughs> but for, for beauty, I don't look at the highway that I'm driving on. I, I, for so beauty, cynical. For beauty, I want, I'll go to the art museum or I, I'll, 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 go, I'll go to a film or whatever. And, and I, I, I know what you're saying. Could we do better? Yes. But I think in terms of, of money spent, the, the functional slash safety, possibly slash life-saving improvements are probably more important. And in terms of like, they're gonna be hot in the summertime, mm. do you take picnic lunches and uh, sit on the boulders? Well, you, you know, they're heat oh. islands. It's the concrete takes the heat and doesn't do anything with it, as opposed to- Vegetation. You know, like, take 6440 West, and you can see beautiful vegetation landscape roadways on the side, and it makes beautiful. a great appearance I would say so. I would say when you get to Wentzville, Lake St. Louis, oh, 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 Chesterfield, okay. I, 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 I want to so I, 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 I just them? all of the hardy signs. I mean, I mean there's some there's open like land. Where the, where the deer and the antelope are playing next to the yeah. highway. You're talking about North Carolina. I agree. And North Carolina is beautiful. Well, Those then highways we don't are live in fantastic. North Carolina. I like we to, live in Missouri. And, and, and in North Carolina, you see the mountains, Charlie. You're not looking <laughs> at the ground right next. You guys are so. Cynical. I want to speak no, up. I want to speak up for our provocateur. I want to speak up. You guys are so cynical because, first of all, I mean, you said you have issues, and I, I, I respect that. I mean, that's good. I'm with this. I do. Okay, so I and I respect that, but I mean, yeah, the, the, there's some mountains. I, I'll give you that, but I think that there's. It's good that you're calling attention to it because I think that that for probably not much more money, they could give thought to making, and, and I think they would in other parts of the area give thought to making it more environmentally pleasant. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with pointing that out. I but really I don't. Know. They it's had very a expensive. Have you bought any I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Hey, well, you know what? Cheap. Yeah. When, when, when I first cheap. moved here in 1988, Operation Brightside had yeah. tulips yes. and daffodils yeah. mm -hmm. on the highways. Yeah. I think mostly funded through AB uh, and maybe some other generous yeah, contributions. They, they, they paid and it looked it. terrific. And you yeah. go to New Mexico, or excuse me, Arizona or Florida, and you just see the sides of the highways, which are very nice, and builds not just the mountains, because when you go into Raleigh, for example, you'll see, I mean, t take a trip out there. You'll see beautiful highways that, ref I mean, and they encourage you to move there <laughs> right. or at least to visit. And I just think, I s remember I think you're years right. ago, you're talking about highway, remember things. Highway 70 when they reconfigured the underpasses and they really gave them short shrift and they had to redo them? Mm -hmm. I think this is happening again. That design would not be in other parts of St. Louis. I, I think guarantee. you're right. Well, no, I, I, I would, I, you know what, I would, I would agree with that. But you, but but that's the way it is, and I kind of don't have a and problem. They, well, they, and they I'm sorry. Need to, they, they because need rocks to, and earth but, are but, rocks and earth. Yeah, but it's I mean, still a st are they, to to. Your point, I mean, you, if we're going to talk about making the area attractive, attractive, I don't think that's as much of a detail. And but again, I don't know the cost, Modot's but I don't think it's a detail. There's, they're not finished, oh. so maybe they will All take right. your... We'll see. Well, they, yeah. we're, we're, have you gone on that Polar Express yet? We were talking about doing it last week. I stayed with the baby. They, they oh, went. Right. So and, you didn't see the garbage? Right. I didn't, but they said it was absolutely phenomenal it's yeah. not good. for okay. adults it's for children okay good the and polar express phenomenal yes do they, do they, okay do thumbs they serve, up to polar express do they serve drinks on the <laughs> uh, no 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 eggnog ray hot hartman chocolate, as hot we chocolate. move along to another topic uh midas <laughs> hospitality is a st louis based company that has mm -hmm. hotels all across the united states mm -hmm. um didn't know too much about them until i did a little research for this program because they're in the news they want to renovate 
the old Sheraton City Center Hotel and Suites, mm -hmm. originally developed by Don Breckenridge, the late great St. Louisan, mm -hmm. yeah. at 14th wow. and Spruce. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of fallen into disrepair. Mm -hmm. To renovate it, they want almost $3 million in tax breaks. But now the president of the Board of Aldermen, Megan Green, and the local alderman, Rasheen Aldridge, say you can only get those tax breaks if you don't interfere in any way with those who want to organize a union at your place of business. And they say, well, we'd like to give the people who want to become union some information. And uh, basically they're being told, support the union or no tax breaks. What do you think? I have mixed feelings about it. I, 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 are they getting historic tax credits? Because that's different from whatever the city might do. I mean, in theory, the city as a matter of public policy, because if they're not asking for tax credits, then the, the government doesn't have any role. If you're asking for tax credits, the city... Probably abatement. Yeah, you, abatement. If you're asking for it, the city has the right, I suspect, to say these are our priorities and you're going to comply with them. And if you don't want to comply with them, good luck to your project, but we're not going to abate it. The city continually, we, you know, there's some stuff in the news about this this week, but the, the, the city continually gives abatements beyond what it ought to be given. I don't know if it's insecurity or what. If we're doing it in North City or parts of South City, I'm all, all in for it. If we're talking about some of the projects that get residential projects that get abated and stuff, I think the city is a little too generous. So it doesn't bother me in principle that they put some conditions. I, I, I support that, the, the, the unions. You know, that if the aldermen say, hey, we want the unions to be able to come in here, I think that's fine. I, I think that you shouldn't interfere with something that might happen in the future. Either give them the money or don't give them the money. And let's go old Chicago style <laughs> where you say, like, oh, yeah, we'll give you the money. Right. But, you know, if we got any problem with the union, hey, you know, the health inspector is going to come by once every two days. <laughs> you know? You know yeah. so it's More bad new. government. I love it. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> the, the workers there can organize. That's federal law. Right. They, right. The question is, can Midas Hospitality say, hey, look, you should know that we're paying you $2 more per hour than the guys down at the Marriott, which happens to be the case. So what the city wants is that Midas has no position whatsoever that's wrong. in this. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, not, that's right. not right. Well, and, and I don't know the history Midas has with yeah, uh, unions all They don't have the them country. at all. They don't not, have Not them. in this area. Oh, oh okay. Well, well, that's see, a nice history well, with unions, isn't it? We don't have them. It was non-union in Arizona and... They interfered greatly with any effort to uh, well, uh, there organize. Are, there are about 300 hotels in our region. Only six are unionized. Wow. Well, that's sure. interesting. And that's another question because one of the things we do is that whenever they're doling out the abatements and stuff, is you know, they aren't asking the question, do we need more? I mean, are, how are the hotels we've got doing? And are we really incentivizing? Because, again, done wrong, if you want the classic example, it's Ballpark Village. Should never have gotten a dime of subsidy because it didn't need it and ended up running a bunch of business, uh, well, restaurants out of business. Uh, Charlie, well, how about this, yeah, so well, Wendy? It's, it's, uh, in Brentwood, should the developer there, Green Street, get uh, the right of eminent domain to put in a nice brewery and apartments where right now there's a fly and tackle shop, there's the uh, Convergence Body and Dance Studio, and they also have the uh, It's Time for Dinner um, meal preparation service, small little companies. Should Green Street get eminent domain be able to take that property? I always hate eminent domain because it just, it, it, it's so David and Goliath. But I think that, you know, recently we've talked a lot about institutions in adapting or dying and so if I if I live in Brentwood and if I think that there's maybe potential that is not being realized then yeah I, I could see I, myself thinking that just, a, a, a nice little entertainment district would, might be exactly what we need I would like to disagree with you I have my okay. sub stacks on this is this week um, first of all to correct it if they don't get eminent or maybe they get the government they're backed by the government's power of eminent domain, which will be, which would be exercised by an outside law firm and all that. But um, I, I think it is absolutely abusive. First of all, Brentwood should have zero tax abatements, tax corporate welfare, as Clayton, as Creepgore, as De Pair, as Chesterfield. This is a complete abuse of a state law that was designed to, to promote 
uh, incentivize development in areas that, whether it's a poor rural town that lost its factory or North St. Louis, whatever it is, that's what they're for. Or they're not designed yeah. to blight. Right, I'm right, sorry. But the eminent domain thing but is a issue. Yeah. It is terrible. It's These are little companies right. that have survived and they're family companies. And all of a sudden, you know, and uh, Green Street says, well, we don't want to use it. Yeah. But it, it just gives them a huge club yeah. to negotiate with. It's awful. And it's I, not I for agree. like rolling. It just makes me And your substack cringe. Very good. Thank right. you it, very much. It just much. makes but me cringe that this could happen. Leave them alone. Yeah, I get the evidence. Oh, wait, we we'll pay them tonight. ten times yeah. what yeah. the business yes, is Yes, that's worth. right. right. That's and, right. And it should be state law. Sure. If, if your if property's you're taken by eminent domain, you get ten, ten times, times the money. Lot of, I agree with that. It should be a lottery ticket. And, right. and, and we'd be like Baruby whistling while we got fired. <laughs> Keep in mind, the rare times <laughs> eminent <laughs> domain should be used is for roads, and of course they've destroyed some communities. No, I mean, the interstates, they destroyed communities with interstates. But And television stations. Exactly. Uh, right. No, but you don't do it for just a commercial project like well, this. No, you can. The can't. Supreme Court, Kilo decision. Well, it's a horrible hey, idea. That's uh, all we have for our discussion. If you'd like to chime in, why not send us a letter? Care of 9 PBS, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. We love those emails, Donnybrook at 9PBS.org. And use uh, hashtag DonnybrookSTL on threads and X. Call the nine line, 314-512-9094. And listen to us on your favorite podcast source, Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Play. Don't forget to join us for Donnie Bash, April the 11th. Call that number or go to that website right there. That's our live broadcast to benefit 9PBS. See you tomorrow night between 5 and 7 at the Ledoux Schnooks. We'll be ringing the bells for the Salvation Army. Hope to see you. But even more, we hope to see your wallet. Have a great evening. <laughs> Donnie Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.